So this is a little review of the neutral legendaries that are being released with Journey to Angoro. And I'm going to rate them based on a system of 1 to 5, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. Something's only going to get a 5 if it's incredibly overpowered, something like Dr. Boom, you know, which was just a whole bunch of value for 7. Um, so, starting with Osrock. Honestly, honestly, I think this card is trash, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, um, but it just seems like a really shit uh, Ancient of Law, Ancient of War, even. So for 7 mana with an Ancient of War, you get a 5-10 taunt. For 9 mana, you get a 5 something taunt. My problem with this card is that it's very slow. Um, th 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 there's a whole bunch of problems with this card. I'll, I'll, I'll run through them one by one. Um, first of all, it's too expensive. If you're paying 9 mana for something, you need it to win the game, right? You need it to do something really good. If you're not winning the game instantly with, with something that costs you 9 mana, why are you even playing it? Um, yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make enough of an impact immediately. It's a really slow card, which is kind of awkward uh, because of the whole elemental synergy. It's like curve stone, one elemental after another, after another, after another, till you get to turn 8, you play the big shaman legendary elemental, and then you win the game. The problem with this is that it, 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 it immediately stops that tempo. Sure, you've got a 520 taunt, so okay, but eh, with 5 attack, there are quite a few big minions that can take 5 damage and survive from it now. Um, so it doesn't even threaten the board state that much. Second issue with this card is that it warns people that it's coming. If you're playing an elemental deck and your opponent obviously is very aware that you're playing an elemental deck, they can kind of imagine that this thing is coming, right? Um, so if you, on turn 8, play a whole bunch of elementals, they can pretty much be sure that this thing is coming the next turn, which means if they have a piece of removal, they're going to have kept it for that point. Uh, it's going to get hexed or polymorphed. Um, considering the fact that when this expansion comes out, my prediction is that Mage and Shaman are going to be like tier 1. Um, because the elemental deck is obviously going to be good, especially for Shaman. Um, they're just going to curve out and you're going to be dead by turn 8 probably. Um, although it, that deck is weak to board clears as well though, hence why uh, Mage is going to be also tier 1, because that, that quest is crazy, pretty easy to accomplish. Um, so that's another problem with this card, is that it's just going to get removed. And a lot of people are going to be running hard removal. Uh, th there's going to be, take for example, if the Paladin quest becomes like playable and good, people are going to need to run an answer for it. And if they come up against a deck that's an elemental deck and not that Paladin deck, then they're going to have like a silence or some kind of transformative effect to shit all over this thing. Um, another problem with this card is that it's Taunt. And I've spent so long just talking about how bad this card is. Considering all the taunt minions that are coming out with this new expansion, by the way, because they're really pushing this whole anti-aggro thing, right? So let's say you're doing the, the warrior thing and you're running taunts. 
um, and that warrior, let's say that warrior deck becomes good, right? And you think of all the other taunts that are in the game, the other the other tar minions. Um, everyone has like a taunt somewhere. Um, apart from Rogue, Rogue couldn't give a shit though. You got the Tortolan uh, Shell Razor. Um, you've got Spike Ridge Steed. Um, plus neutral taunts, the Tolvir Warden, sorry not the Tolvir Warden, there's the Elemental, which is what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's another taunt minion there, the sh uh, Shell Shifter. Uh, and then there's like the neutral taunts as well, which there are a lot of. Um, Primordial Drake is a good card that's taunt. Um, this thing down here is taunt, I can't find it. Uh, that 5 mana 4 7 is taunt, Stegadon. Uh, there was one that. Oh, yeah, the Tar Creeper is a really interesting looking card, and I think people are going to play it in anti aggro decks. Um, and we all remember what happened last time. There was a taunt minion in everyone's deck. People started running the Black Knight. Uh, and I'm probably going to put the Black Knight in my first deck of this expansion because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of taunts going around uh, therefore the Black Knight's probably going to hit uh, last time we saw the Black Knight was when Sludge Belcher was still in the game and every deck had two Sludge Belchers in it basically so yeah that's another problem with this card uh, even if it does survive, even if it for some reason doesn't get destroyed by a Black Knight or transformed or whatever so, it's got five attack on turn nine. It's not even th it's not even threatening anything. Um, this card is bad. It's really bad. It's it's noob bait. Uh, it this is like noob bait. This is a card that bad players look at and they go, "Wow, this is so strong," and it's really just crap. Um, from one out of five, I'd give it a like. It's it's playable, and if you reduce its mana cost with the shaman thing, with the with the card that reduces elemental uh, cost, maybe it's all right. Um, but it's still just kind of you wouldn't want to play it on turn eight anyway, because you'd rather play the shaman legendary on turn eight, which is a legend, uh, which is a bleh, an elemental. Um, yeah, yeah, this card's bad. I'm gonna give it. a Fuck it, I'll give it like a 2. It's like a 2 out of 5. It's pretty bad. Uh, spent ages talking about that one card. Moving along. Hemet, the Jungle Hunter. Interesting card. Just draw cards in your deck that cost 3 or less. Uh, this fixes a problem if you are struggling with card draw. You can sort of guarantee that you're only going to be drawing the cards that are expensive. This could actually be really good in Control wa uh, Warrior. The classic Control Warrior decks had a mana curve that was sort of like this. It was like high 1, 2, and then it would dip down really far, and then towards the end it would curve up again really high, uh, like the classic Control Warrior deck. Um, you know, you'd be running loads of high cost legendaries that did a lot of good things, and then everything else was just a bunch of like situational spells, you'd have double shield slam, double execute, um, armor smiths, all that kind of stuff. If that form of uh, of control warrior came back, this could be a good card in that deck because you literally just wipe out all your useless crap at a certain point when you don't want it anymore. And from that turn onwards, you're just going to be drawing legendaries. Um, this card is really, really interesting. Uh, it's really hard to gauge the power level of it though now without being able to play test it. But it's very interesting and it has a lot of potential. It's it's also a really balanced card I think. It it's got a, such an interesting design. Um, it may just turn out to be like too niche and just not really played. Um, but I do think it has a lot of potential. 
And I'm going to base its score on in a deck where it does work. Um, you know, you, and in that deck it would basically be I've controlled the early game, the board state is uh, stable, I play Hemet, and from that turn onwards you're drawing good stuff. Um, and in that scenario, it's a really good card, but you need to end the game fast after that because if it enters fatigue, you'll lose immediately. So I'm going to give that like a 4 out of 5. It's quite strong if it works. Uh, Elise the Trailblazer. Uh, we all know how this works. We've all seen it. Shuffles a pack into your deck that costs 2 mana. You open the pack, and then you get 5 extra cards. Add it to your hand, not your deck. That's really important. Uh, the legendary that shuffles five legendaries into a deck is really bad. Why? Because it fills your deck with crap. Sometimes you need to top deck something uh, specific. Uh, that le that legendary essentially stops you from doing that. And even in a class like Warlock where you could draw constantly, it still sucked. Um, this is good, however, because when you draw it, you open it and they enter your hand. So it actually fills your hand. If you're running out of stuff, fills your hand. It's a five mana five five, good stats. Um, and on average, you're gonna get like a legendary, an epic, and you know just some interesting stuff. I don't think it's ridiculously powerful, but uh, but I think it's like somewhere equal to Hemet. Um, I'm going to say for this card, I'm going to give it a 4. Same as Hemet. Maybe I'm being a little bit too generous with Hemet Nesting Worry. But no, I do think it's a really strong card. Fuck it, I'll stick to my guns. Uh, Spirit Singer Umbra. Blizzard, really? What are you doing? Uh, I feel like they've just made a mistake again. I feel like they've fucked up again. Take a card like Brown Bronzebeard. While Bran Bronzebeard was in the game, he restricted every single Battlecry minion they invent from that point onwards. Uh, because while he exists in standard, you have to think about cards that you can play with it. By making this card, they've, they've limited their design space for Death Rattles, because Death Rattles can only be so powerful. Um... For example, if you played this and Sylvanas on the same turn, it would have been amazing, but she's rotating out. It gives you double value on everything. It, it, it offers you more... Actually, no, it doesn't offer you more value than... Yeah, it, it just basically gives you double value, which is what Brown Bronzebeard did. This costs one more mana, and has one more attack. But it does basically the same thing. Gives you a little bit of extra value. Because it costs one more than Bran, I don't think it's as powerful as Bran. Plus, battle cries tend to be um, a little bit more powerful because they happen immediately. This sort of splits everything into two halves. So it gives it a battle cry, right? One part happens now, the other part happens later. So it's not, it's not going to be as good as Bran is. It's still a really strong card though, but I don't think it's as good as Bran. I think it's just going to be a decent value card. Um, let me give it like a 3. I think it's a 3. Um, it's just going to offer you a little bit of value. Like The reason Hemet gets a 4 here and this thing gets a 3 is because 
Like, if Hemet works, if it works, it's more powerful than this thing. This thing just offers you a tiny bit of extra value. But it's still good, it's not a bad card, it's good. Um, and finally, for the neutral legendaries, the Vorax. After you cast a spell on this minion, summon a 1-1 one, one plant and cast another copy on it. Uh, same thing as Spirit Singer Umbra. Um, it, it offers you a bit of extra value, um, but it's a lot more situational. It's a lot more situational. Um, it's an it's a must kill though. Like you have to kill this thing immediately. Uh, you put it, it costs quite a lot though. That's the problem with it. So like if you did this plus kings, it's eight mana for a seven seven and a five five. If they can't deal with it, it's a bit scary. There's a potential for a lot of value, but I don't think it's crazy strong. I'm trying to think of other situations where you can use it. There are not a lot of classes that put buffs onto things. Uh, think about the twins from um, from the the grand tournament. They didn't really see much play, and for that reason, I don't really think this is going to see much play either. I think this card is, but but it like it's 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 okay though. It's decent. That's high threat, but I don't. Um, actually, I don't even think it's that good. Uh, I don't know whether to give it, give it a 2 or a 3. I uh, I'll I'll give it I'll give it a 2. I'm not feeling it. I could be wrong there. I'm not feeling it. So, there you go. Those are all the neutral legendaries. Hopefully it won't take me as long to review the rest of the stuff, otherwise it's going to take me a really long time. <laughs>